everyone we are back again playing Subnautica and basically today we are going to continue with the role play this is part two and let's just jump right into it doesn't need much explanation at this point this is now day three of being on this water planet 4546B and we are stuck here. Um, I have decided to make a survival log in order to, um, if something should happen to me, this should be shared with my daughter back home. And I am currently going to search for other survivors. Yesterday I was able to, well two days ago, I was able to make contact with somebody who claims he's from Earth. We'll see how uh, correct that claim is if we have a chance to speak to him again. He said that he would speak to us again but he set up a time and I have no idea what the time difference is where he is versus on this forsaken planet. So the goal at the moment is to find another survivor. There is Life Pod 3, which has landed in the shallows. The crew reported their sea glide damaged, so we're going to go out there and see what we can do. But first. Continued degradation of the Auroras. Oh. Drive core may result in a quantum detonation. Continue well, a monitor. quantum detonation would be rather more than unfortunate. Uh, what, what we're going to do at the moment is try to find ingredients for another high capacity O2 tank and then we will go to the spot recommended on the PDA to find the other survivors assuming that they are still with their life pod they may have also found land somewhere there must be land somewhere right this planet must have land so right now I need to find some silver and some quartz not exactly sure oh and some titanium and metal salvage makes a great way to find titanium so uh my name is riley robinson and i am a marine biologist i crash landed on this planet i'm a passenger of, of the aurora currently just trying to survive on this planet and get back to my daughter my daughter's name is rebecca She has been studying marine biology as well. Don't know if she did it just to please me or not. I used to be married and no longer am. My husband died in the Obruxus Prime Massacre. Of course, nobody ever told me what actually happened, just that he had died. We weren't allowed to know the full story. Something about morale and so we've learned to use the fire extinguisher as a method for moving actually quite fast i'm going to make a few more of those in preparation for heading out to the site of that other life pod and we'll see what we can do there i'm really hoping that I can survive and get back to my daughter. I never had a chance to say a lot of the things to her that mothers want to say and well I'm stuck here. If the Aurora's Drive Corps explodes my chances of survival will be greatly decreased unless I can find lead to create some sort of radiation suit. I don't if I had a way, you know, I'm a marine biologist, I'm firmly against killing animals, but if I had a way to make those stupid crash fish go extinct, I would probably use it. One can only hope that the continuing degradation of Aurora's drive core will somehow result in all the crash fish on this planet going extinct. Why is it so impossible to find any silver or 
corpse at the moment. All right, I'm just going to go in this direction and we'll see what we can find. I don't need any more titanium at the moment. There must be a way to find more silver. So here are the creep vines that we discovered the other day. I'm actually quite interested in the biology. I've had a little bit of a chance to think and plan now, and I think it's wise to begin to scan various items that might have some influence in whether or not I survive. In particular, any technology that I might be able to use. Certain. Oh, this is nearby cave entrance. So I think it's wise to. Oh, good, we found silver. I think it's wise to go up at the moment, considering that I don't have a great deal of oxygen. And go to surface before I try to explore that. And it's chances are, if it's 90 meters deep, I won't be able to explore much of it, but I can at least find out. If there's anything of particular interest down there. So I think that my strategy at the moment is going to be to have two high capacity O2 tanks as soon as I'm able to make them. Interesting. Alright, so salt. Salt deposits can be useful. I wonder what. Oh, what's that? That's very interesting. Alright. Let's, what, what, okay, well that, that went away, so I'm not sure what that was. Alright, going down to see what's in here. Well now, this is really fascinating. I really like, these are beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what these are. Jelly shrooms, well, that's a, uh, a rather obvious name for them. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, there is lava down there, it looks like. Uh, well, let's, let's just not go down here at the moment. We have more important things to do. We still need to find a little bit more corpse so that I can make another... Oh, dear. That, that's good to know. Artificial structure. Interesting. So that could mean that there's something of importance down there. Well, I wish I had a way to mark that. Perhaps I'll find beacon, something like that that I can make. We don't need to start looking for more blueprints. I originally went on this trip to go to a planet with great biodiversity and a great many specimens that Altera was planning to exploit for various reasons. I was hoping to be able to um, advocate for the creatures there that Altera wouldn't go too far. What on earth are... oh, okay. What are these? There's a lot of them. They don't look particularly friendly. Oh, um, don't want to get too close either. Alright, what are these? They don't seem overly Aggressive. They aren't really approaching me. What? What's the deal with these? All right. All right. Let's take a look at what that is. Oh, so they are. They are predators. Interest. Nighttime hunting. So perhaps they're more aggressive at night. Stark teeth may have applications in enameled glass. Oh, well, that's quite interesting. So if we find any stark teeth. Then those may help us to create an enameled glass structure. I'm not entirely sure why we would need that, but perhaps to fabricate a vehicle of some sort. We are going to need a vehicle at some point, perhaps. Um, 
to escape this planet. I really think it's it's overly optimistic to assume that someone else is going to rescue any of us survivors at this point, um, assuming that there are other survivors. Alright, so we need more quartz, so where's a good place? Well, this red grass is quite interesting. Let's see. Hmm. Alright, whoa, that looks like a, a very aggressive creature. Let's let's not spend too much time around that. Let's go up and then we'll go back down and check out this wreck or whatever that is. You know, it's funny because when I was speaking to Billy, I, I really did not enjoy speaking to him. He was the most obnoxious person I've ever had the misfortune to meet. But at the same time, um, now that I am entirely alone and have no one to speak to, I am having a very difficult time. Uh, I think that creating a survival log like this will help me to order my thoughts better. And also, not to go completely insane now that- oh, this is exactly what we needed. This is a beacon fragment, it's perfect. Oh, well we need two, so that wasn't actually all that helpful. Alright, that is nothing useful, which is a little bit strange. Okay. So, anything else useful here? Looks like we have all that we're going to have here. Right. Uh, oh, there's more up here. Is there anything useful up here? Looks like nothing at all. Well, that is rather disappointing. So, this is another little cave. The problem with these cave- oh, quartz, exactly what I needed. I need one more piece of quartz, so let's just hope that there aren't too many crash fish down here. Uh, to- oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Well, thankfully, I have a little bit of extra air, so hopefully that will not happen. Oh, perfect. And of course I can hear crash fish somewhere close by. Let's drop some titanium so that we can pick up the, uh, oh, well, pick up the silver because I believe we still need a bit of that. So we just need one more quartz and then we can make our other uh, high capacity O2 tank. And then we will go to the other um, life pod because I feel that it's very likely Oh, we have another message. We should get back immediately. It might be Bill. Uh, as I said, not that <laughs> not that I enjoy speaking to him, but the reality is that it is nice to hear a human being's voice. It's strange that he said he was from Earth. I'm, I'm really confused at how that's possible. Unless he's... Well, no, that doesn't make any... No, I can't think of a single way that he could be from Earth, honestly. I really can't. It doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. At the moment, I suppose we'll just have to take him at his word. So let's let's go here. Food. I'm getting a little bit hungry. We have water, but not food. I need to get some food. All right. This is Avery Quinn of Trading Ship Sunbeam. Aurora, do you read? Trading Ship Aurora. Sunbeam. Nothing but vacuum. No, we're here. We're here. All right. Well, why? He offered help. Why can't they hear me? Aurora, I'm out on the far side of the system. It's going to take more than a week to reach you. Well, more than a week is better than not at all. Yes, we need assistance. We need assistance, I'll yes. Them again tomorrow. Are you joking? Gonna have us blowing our credits, running errands for Altera. This isn't running errands, it's saving lives. <sighs> Ridiculous. survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. Oh, my favorite activity. I'm pretty sure I didn't have any choice. All right, we need to get some food, and then we need to get some... Just one more piece of quartz, and I think we can make another high-capacity O2 tank. So let's get some food. This one, I believe, is edible. Edible? Let's see. Um... Data bank. Really? Alright. Ladder fish, hover fish. 
Alright, we little shelf there, that was a bit odd. Let's see what this is. Shuttlebug. Very interesting as a creature. Honestly, like, if, if I wasn't trying to survive, I would be feeling that this was the best time of my life really very exciting and so many new creatures to discover what more could a marine biologist want well the answer is uh, regular food and water and certainty that the next 10 minutes wouldn't result in your death that would be an improvement for sure So I basically was hunting for quartz throughout the entire night before I finally found what I was looking for and now I'm, I'm quite hungry and we are heading back to the life pod. We're going to make a few fire extinguishers since at the moment that's our fastest way to travel. Don't know why I keep saying we. promise that I don't actually think I'm a wee. <sighs> so, Emergency. Starvation imminent. it's possible that we can establish contact. Yes, I know that. Thank you very much. It's possible that we can establish contact with the sunbeam and if we can, there's a faint possibility of rescue. So the important thing now is hurrying to find other survivors. That way, when rescue comes, perhaps I won't be the only one getting rescued and there'll be a few with me. Assuming, of course, they come and they don't just decide to pass us by. As of day four, I'm beginning to have my doubts. I really should get some sleep. But honestly, I am much too nervous to sleep. So I will try to visit our friends, see if they survived, and then worry about getting some sleep. Floating air pump. I don't know if that's going to be useful at the moment. I probably won't worry about it at the moment. I have quite a bit of air with my two tanks. I considered only bringing one because having two does make it... Oh dear. Two hours. Well, let's let's go then and... Oh, there's another message. There's another message. Oh, is that Billy? Aurora, this is Sunbeam. No. Sunbeam. We just massive debris field at your location. I didn't know how bad... How many of you? I, I didn't know. Well, now you do. We're now en route to your location. We're going to bring you home. Oh, thank God. Sunbeam out. Huh. What else can They're I They're coming for us. What? The only time I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR. And I blew it. You know, that's, that's not really inspiring confidence. So are all the others. Well... It seems that they don't have any experience in landing on a planet. Do you think that they would have that experience? Whatever. You know, I don't understand how a pilot of a ship can ha not have experience landing on a planet. <sighs> Perhaps there's not much to land on. I, I guess that that's what they mean, is that there's not much land here. Now, there's a lot of water. This is just taking up space, so I guess I'm just going to drop it and feel rather bad about mucking up the ecosystem with that, but hopefully it won't do too much damage. I'm going to get some more quartz, because if there's one thing I've noticed, it's that copper and all those things are fairly plentiful, but quartz is rather difficult to find at the moment. So I can come back here anytime I need some more quartz or or copper or titanium because it has the limestone outcrops so that's very helpful so let's use this and see how fast we can get to our destination I 
admittedly, this is a bit of a terrifying way to travel. Oh, so those things are indeed savage and they do bite. That hurt. All right. I don't understand why they seem so friendly earlier. They're even a pack. Normally when creatures are in a pack, they're more vicious. That's very odd. I guess it would be school on a pack. Very strange. Let's keep going. What I've always heard is that the, the foremost tenant of survival is to be prepared. Well, we are more or less prepared at the moment. All right, life pod three is damaged. Well, I don't. <laughs> There's not a single glimpse of them. All right. Well, perhaps they made it to land. Life pod three crew log. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell rig to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? I'm sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. Overload three meters from the life pod. Which is exactly what happened. I'd be terrified. So there, sea glide broke exactly few meters from the pod as he said and unfortunately it does not seem that well perhaps perhaps they made it anyway we can assume that they were able to make it to a different location uh, before their pod was damaged what on earth did this much damage to their pod perhaps that happened on landing no because well that can't be right. All right. I uh, have no idea. What on earth? Well, this one seems to be ill. A specimen with symptoms of infection. Bacterial infection. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration, may be contagious, do not consume the flesh. Well, that is beyond unfortunate. That means that every moment we spend in the water, we could be exposed to a lethal bacterium. All right, I don't really know what to do at this point. We don't have survivors. All we have is a life pod and the Sea Glide. Well, we have the Sea Glide blueprint now, and we also have the compass, so that will at least help us get some direction. I'll just have to write down everything based on the location of the life pod at the moment. So we can say 300 meters west of the life pod and so forth, and that will help us to find our way around a bit. So at the moment, I think that we're about to find a much more efficient way of travelling than the, uh, the fire extinguisher. The main problem with the fire extinguisher, okay. Why do those stupid things want to bite you every time you go past? That's not very polite. I think they care the slightest. Alright. I really don't know what to do now. It's certainly not the time to panic, and yet I most certainly feel like panicking. This is a very unfortunate situation. I can't find the other survivors. There has to be a way to contact them. If Billy was able to contact me, perhaps he has spoken to another survivor. I'll have to ask him that next time I speak to him. Assuming that I am able to establish contact with him once again. There are no messages, and at the moment, no survivor, no other survivors. Our best option is to immediately create the compass and then create also the sea glide. What was necessary for the sea glide? Deployable, de de deployables, right. Sea Glide needs battery, lubricant, and copper wire. So for lubricant, as I recall, we need some of the creepvine seeds. We can do that. Um, first, let's go ahead and make the compass. 
So what all do we need for the oh right, we need that. So it looks like I still need more silver in order to create the compass. And silver for the compass, oh great. No, 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 no. Take that, take that right in the face. Oh well, that didn't work. So what we don't have at the moment is silver, so let's go find some silver and then we need two of the acid mushrooms. It seems that those are the way that we make batteries, not really sure why, oh perfect, another one of those stupid little crash fish, ha, got away from it fast enough. I love doing that because then at least they kill themselves. Just you know, I don't feel like I can say it quite enough, but I'd really be perfectly happy if those went extinct. I really would. All right, let's... I think they're starting to become more of a survivalist every day and less of a marine biologist. A normal marine biologist would never say such a thing. No species should go extinct and all that. Well, I suppose that's what landing on an alien planet and trying to live does to you. Makes you callous. So at the moment, I'm feeling quite callous. All right, so here we are with the... Oh yes, this is also where those are, the stalkers. Stalkers are something that we want to avoid, for sure. Oh yes, brain coral, brain coral, how interesting. So it's a coral, not a plant. It's a coral and it appears to give us oxygen which is quite fortunate, if you ask me. Let's ex examine this. Really, this is the best opportunity that a... Oh, perfect. Of course, my inventory is full. This is the best opportunity that I could possibly ask for. Um, to be able to see all these creatures and experience this. It would be nice if every moment doing it wasn't risking my life, but at the same time, it is quite a s remarkable business. 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Well, let's not take any risks with that. We can afford to go unconscious again. Still not quite sure how I managed to get back to the life board the last time, so I've decided not to think about it. That seems to be the best way to survive on this planet, is not to worry too much about anything. Oh, right, and here we might find some silver. Let's see if we have... no nope, lead. That is not useful at the moment. Well, it might be useful when I... Oh, Noble Vehicle Bay Fragment. Well, I'm not planning on being here that long, so I'm really hoping I don't have to build a Mobile Vehicle Bay, but there's no telling how long we could be here. Um, well, the Sunbeam is coming to pick us up, and that is very exciting, of course. I do wonder if there are any other survivors and if they'll have a chance to also help the other survivors. The only other thing that really concerns me is... What if the, what if whatever shot down the aurora or, or damaged the aurora also damages the sunbeam? I wish there was some way to contact them and encourage them to scan the planet a little bit more thoroughly before taking the risk of coming here. I'm going to drop the lead. Oh, I don't think I need it at the moment. Why are those stalkers attacking me? Oh, it might be the light. If there are creatures, if there are creatures that are focused on that prefer to be in the darkness, then it's likely that the light annoys them, at, at, in which case I should probably take a special care whenever they come near and just drop the light. It seems we have plenty of access to titanium, less access to lead and silver, so I am sacrificing the titanium and picking up as much lead and silver and gold as I can at the moment, because 
those are in much shorter supply. All right, now we have what we need. We can create a sea glide. So, oh, there's a great deal more here. This is a very useful area. Wish that I had the um, compass at the moment and I could see exactly where it was compared to my pod, but of course I can't, so fortunately I probably won't be able to find it again. There are worse ways to travel with me than with a fire extinguisher. I never would have imagined that fire, that, that uh, travelling with a fire extinguisher would be my preferred method of travel, but honestly it works quite well. So let's just head back to the pod, and it's quite dark already, so I'm going to sleep as soon as I have made what I need to make. You know, it really is astonishing just how beautiful this planet is, and yet everything on it seems to want to kill me. But it really is quite astonishing how beautiful it is. What? Quantum detonation. Oh, that is... No, no, no. Let's just hope that there's no survivors closer than me. And if the explosion reaches all the way here, then I am dead. And whoever finds this, I love my daughter and I'm very sorry for everything I've ever done wrong. I guess that the ship is farther away than it looked. Radiation, lovely. Fortunately, I already have lead, so I may already be able to make a radiation suit. One can only hope. Alright. Now the ship is far beyond any repair, quite obviously. And it would be extremely dangerous to go anywhere near it in its current state, so I think I will keep my distance. See what we need to make a fiber mesh. What? What makes fiber mesh? I'm not sure what makes fiber mesh. Alright, well we'll have to find that out. In the meantime, in the meantime let's cook something for dinner. Have that. And now it's time to create our sea glide. I'm actually quite excited about the sea glide. I never would have thought I could be excited about something like that in the current situation that I'm in, but the reality is that anything that helps me survive is quite exciting at this point. Is essential in construction of vehicles and power plants. Well, I'm not exactly a, uh, a mechanic or an engineer, and yet I'm quite aware of that. Right, let's create some copper wire. We also needed a wiring kit for something. Oh, right, for the... Uh, compass. So let's create two copper wire, one for the compass and I believe one for the sea glide. Yes, now we can create a sea glide. This is perfect. This is actually quite exciting. The sea glide will increase your effective exploration range. Well, the reality is I don't plan on exploring very far. For long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod. Five kilometers? They think I'm going to explore five kilometers out. Yeah, I don't think so. I'd be lucky if I can make it to one kilometre out, honestly, like, this planet is so dangerous. I don't really like taking risks. Well, it's already almost morning, but I am going to go to sleep, so... This is the end of, I believe, day four, unless I lost a day somewhere in between, which is entirely possible. This is the end of day four. Survivor log, Riley Robinson. Somehow, I've survived this long. I hope that I can contact Billy tomorrow. In the meantime, it's time to go to sleep.